So I was spending, I was spending some time with the Lord just now. And I was thinking about Jacob um, when he was wrestling with the man, right? And so I went for myself and I read it because I, I haven't read it a, a lot. I don't like I haven't read it a, uh, in a long time. And so after reading it, and the story is in Genesis 32, after reading it, when I, when I read it and the Holy Ghost ministered it to me, like I couldn't help but read it word for word and really say, Jacob was really on one. Like, like that, when you read it word for word, right? It really is like you step away from the story and when you really think about it, it's, it's like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And what God has done for me with the anointing that I is to really take a scripture that has been ministered and preached to me one way and really the Holy Ghost has has really illuminated and and made rhema for me that scripture in a whole nother unique and individual way and so when I'm reading Genesis 32 everything about that interaction doesn't make sense in the natural it, it just it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense and the truth of the matter is n up until this point nothing about jacob's life does make sense right jacob is jacob is a swindler jacob is a deceiver jacob is the one whose mother gets him to steal from his brother yet in the midst of all of that things have always worked out for jacob like things have always worked out for jacob right and at this moment in time as jacob is going because he wants to make peace with esau jacob has supernaturally right before this moment been been he has been supernaturally blessed by god he is on laban's farm right he is work he is working for the hand of Laban's daughter, who actually enforces even more time on Jacob. Laban puts a demand on Jacob that he then goes out of his way to make sure that, that in the natural, it won't work. And God supernaturally sends Jacob a dream so that Jacob can prosper on Laban's farm. It doesn't make sense what God does for Jacob, right? Laban tells Jacob, you can leave, but you can only leave if you have this type of livestock, right? And then J and then Laban goes out of his way to make sure that that the pigs that and the that everything's there won't produce what Jacob needs. And God supernaturally, supernaturally makes sure that Jacob prospers so that Jacob can leave. And now Jacob is on his way with all this stuff, all this surplus to meet his brother who he wants to have peace with, right? Who he knows he's done wrong with, but he wants to have peace with him, right? And so in this interaction, in this moment in time, in Genesis 32, Jacob is all by himself. Jacob has, has, has he has kind of like right before this interaction, right? He's kind of done some natural stuff to make sure that just in case, Esau comes for him, all won't be lost. So he, he said to, to half of y'all go this way, half of y'all go that way. And now Jacob is by himself. Now Jacob is by himself. And when you read this interaction word for word, it doesn't make sense, right? And I'm gonna set the stage for you in the natural. So Jacob is by himself and the Bible introduces this person as a man the bible says a man i had been preached this was an angel the niv actually even says jacob wrestles with god but he's introduced as a man right so he comes he doesn't say anything he's he's flesh for flesh with jacob right this is this is not uh this is not you know uh jacob thinking about this or this is word for word jacob is wrestling with a human being and jacob is wrestling with him right so imagine so jacob is wrestling with this man let me just set the scene jacob is wrestling with this man and the man set makes a decision he's like Okay, I'm I'm not going to be able to get away from this thing. So he weakens Jacob by throwing Jacob's hip out of socket. And Jacob still will not let go. Jacob still is wrestling with the man, right? Like Jacob is still wrestling with the man. And so Jacob says to the man, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Jacob, why would you think that this man is going to bless you? Why would you think that this man can bless you? 
if somebody comes up to me and they start getting ready to, to wrestle with me, I'm not going to think you're here for my good. I'm not going to think you're here to bless me. But th- listen, Jacob has always been on one. Jacob has, has the mindset, the identity at this point that, listen, it just works out for me. It just works out for me. So the man says to Jacob, what's your name? And he says, Jacob. And so the man in this moment changes Jacob's identity and he changes Jacob's name to Israel. And so now Jacob says to the man, what's your name? And the man does not give Jacob his name, but he blesses Jacob, right? And so as this, as I read this, right, I'm just thinking to myself, who of us, if if a person comes up to us and starts fighting with us, we're going to think you're here to bless us. Who, which of us out of our mouths would say, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, right? But yet here is the audacity of Jacob to demand that this thing that is fighting and contending with him blesses him, right? Here is the boldness of Jacob that after all he has been through in his life to know, listen, it doesn't matter what is against me, I'm coming out on top, right? That thing that has been fighting your marriage, you're going to bless me. That thing that has been fighting your body, you're going to bless me. That thing that has been fighting your children, oh, you're going to bless me. You're not just going to come into my life and disrupt my life and now, I, no, you're going to bless me. You're going to bless me in the name of Jesus. That thing that has been fighting your purpose and your destiny, oh, you're going to bless me. I haven't just been in my prayer closet fasting and sowing just to make it out. No, you're going to bless me. That's how God works. Joseph didn't just leave out of prison and was like, okay, I'm free. No, now I am ruler. Now I am, I am second in command to Pharaoh. You're not going to let me go until you bless me. That thing that those voices, those people that have been contending with you, oh, you're going to bless me. You're that thing that has been speaking against your life. Oh, you're going to bless me. You're going to bless me. You're going to bless me in the name of Jesus. That is the audacity and the boldness that we have. This thing that has been fighting you, you're going to bless me. I'm like Jacob. You have been, listen, I didn't ask for you to come here. You came to me. You started fighting me. You started wrestling against me. You disrupted my marriage. You disrupted my health. You disrupted my life. I didn't ask to be here. So I'm not letting go until this thing blesses me. I'm not letting go. This thing that has been bothering my children, this thing that has been bothering my destiny, this thing that has been trying to stagnate me, I, now I'm wrestling back with you and I'm not letting go until you bless me. I am not letting go until you bless me. I am a child of the most high God and I am not letting go until this thing that has been contending with me and wrestling with me and fighting me. Now I say out of my mouth, like Jacob, I'm not letting go until you bless me. I am demanding in the name of Jesus that this thing bless me. I am not letting go. I am not letting go. That man saw that he could not overpower Jacob. Even when he threw Jacob's when he threw Jacob's hip out of socket, Jacob still wouldn't let go. Jacob said, no, you're going to bless me. You come up out of here and you're wrestling with me all night long. It's almost daybreak and we still up here wrestling. Oh, you're going to bless me. You're going to bless me. You're going to bless me. So that man says, now your name is Israel. Now your name is Israel. And Jacob is like, you, you, you gotta be God. Like I've literally come face to face with God, right? Imagine the boldness to speak to that thing that has been fighting you and to not just say, oh, I just want, I just want out. No, you're going to bless me. That thing that has been fighting you. Oh, I don't just want you gone. You're going to bless me. You're going to bless me. That thing that has been wrestling you and contending with you and fighting you and had you crying and had you weak and had you weary and had you ready to give up and had you ready to be suicidal. That thing in the name of Jesus Christ, you are going to bless me. You are going to bless me. You are going to bless me. I will not let go until I come out of this thing blessed. Blessed. 